believe this is the 15th year at UC Irvine. And uh, it's a class that is uh, the longest running strategy elective uh, in the school's history. And uh, thanks to Fold and Company, and uh, you were there in the beginning, we worked with Fold and Company to develop the concept of the war game. And Fold coached us through the uh, first few war games that we ran here. It shows them the different ways that you, uh, as a strategist or as a line manager, can look at the competitive market through different lenses. And it brings what I'm going to call the real value of uh, having a leadership team together that can uh, debate the issues, uh, that can discuss in depth the issues, that can find ways to collaborate, and basically look uh, at the competitive environment through multiple lenses. Uh, and the most important part is they can look at it through the lenses of multiple competitors and see how different competitors are taking a look at the market and be able to uh, build uh, their own company strategy, not only based on their own strengths and weaknesses, but also taking a look at the threats and opportunities, particularly the threats that are posed by how uh, the competitors may react to that situation. War games are not one-off situations. War games are something that you uh, that you run on a periodic basis. Uh, we recommend companies run war games when they're looking at a major acquisition. Uh, we recommend companies run war games when there is a significant technological breakthrough. Uh, we recommend that uh, companies run war games when a new competitor comes into the field. Uh, we often recommend they run war games when they're getting ready to launch a new product. Uh, we run war games when you're going into a new geographic area. So basically the way that we look at it is when any uh, really significant event takes place in your competitive environment, or when you're making a very significant investment to either extend your strategy or uh, change it in one way or another, that provides an opportunity for the leadership team to run a war game. So uh, we think uh, because in the environment that we're in right now, uh, and this, you know, particularly look at this where we have supply chains that are constantly under pressure and changing due to political and social and economic issues that are going on in the world. As these major issues come up, we recommend the management team sit down and run a war game. You know, the war games provide a really good, what I call platform uh, for senior teams to practice strategic decision-making and analyze complex scenarios. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of my students that have come out tell me though that one of the biggest things and biggest benefits and values from these war games are risk mitigation. We can identify and mitigate uh, you know, potential risks and vulnerabilities in our business strategies. We simulate different scenarios and you can begin to see where the holes may be. Collaboration and alignment is really important because war games give a huge value when you kind of go cross-functionally across in the organization and get cross-functional teams looking at that issue. Now I've got everybody that has a hand in that decision-making collaborating together. And that learning together is the next part, which is I call learning and development. They're a valuable experience who I call helping the participants learn how to learn about mm -hmm. what's going on in the business. And then the third thing is just around your strategic planning execution. The fact that you now have a war game that people have talked about, they've got looking at sim, different, sim, uh, different ways to look at risks, look at opportunities, and then they can go to an execution plan that is in accordance with what, with what they found out in that war game. In summary, war games offer immense value in today's business environment by enhancing strategic decision making, providing competitive intelligence, mitigating risks, fostering innovation, promoting collaboration, and facilitating learning uh, and, uh, and driving competitive advantage. In other words, I look at it and as a war game really <clears throat> empowers the organization to navigate the complexities of the business landscape and stay ahead of the ever-changing marketplace. This becomes a way to accelerate outthinking the competition. You know, I'm outthinking them and I'm outknowing them. That enables me to outperform them. What we're currently using now is advanced data analytics. You can incorporate advanced data analytics techniques to enhance the simulation analysis. We can leverage now big data. We can use machine learning and predictive analytics, and we can gather real-time data. 
And that's one area. Uh, another area we're now looking at is gamification and virtual reality. Uh, the use of gamification techniques in VR are gaining traction in war games. The technologies create what I call immersive and interactive experiences. Uh, VR can simulate complex scenarios. And what it enables a participant to do is you can visualize and experience this competitive environment in basically a much more kind of uh, interactive and tangible way. It's kind of like a picture is worth a thousand words. And when I can be able to see how this plays out, you know, in you know, in my headset, so to speak, or if I can use gamification techniques, then I can do it because of the exponential increase in computing power. I can do it a lot faster. When I can integrate AI and machine learning algorithms, I can transform a war game. And you right now can go to ChatGPT and we can prompt something literally during the war game and we can get immediate answers to that. And we have to be careful, of course, that we're asking the right questions, which we call prompt engineering. We have to be careful that we're looking at the data. But in a lot of cases uh, up through uh, 2021, we've got some pretty good data. And if you're asking those questions, we can figure out how to extend that data into the future.